Now that you've got the software installed, you've got Eclipse with Gazebo built in, we're gonna show you how to, how to use it. And one of the first things that, do, that you can do that's like really easy to get started is to play with some of the sample robots that we've provided with Eclipse. And the one we're gonna show you first, uh, we call Gearsbot. And it's, uh, it's just a, it's a model of an actual robot that we've been using for demonstrations. Um, and, but we'll show you what it looks like in simulation. All right, so to create the project, you click on this icon over here, which is the new, and you go down, and depending on your language, you either open up WPI Lib Robot Java development or C++ development. So today we're doing Java. So then you open up the example projects. Oh, so we haven't set a team number yet, so we're gonna need to pick a team number. So we're gonna do 190 for now, since that's WPI, the t team that WPI meant was. Um, so I'm gonna create the Gearsbot example, uh, and we'll name it Gearsbot. And we're gonna hit finish. So now we have a new project that shows up over here. And if we look at the uh, source for it, you can see that it gives you a bunch of example files the, so this, this code can run either on the real gear spot or the simulation one, and the code is all the same with the exception of a few special conditions. So one condition is the risk where the PID tuning is slightly different for the real world and the model, and that's because the model doesn't have quite the right mass properties. So to account for this, there's an if block saying if robot is in simulation, and then it sets all PID parameters for simulation. So this is in the case where, some, in general, the simulation just works the same way, whether it's, whether it's real or, or simulated. You'll see that 99.9% that of the code in this project is identical, uh, whether the, you know, for either the real robot or the simulated robot. But there's a few places where it's a little bit different, this being one of them, and there's another spot just a little bit further down. Um, where we're checking to see, in this case, if it's real. So there's two, two flags. One is is simulator or in simulation and is real, depending on whether it's real hardware or, the, or simulated hardware. So why don't you explain what this yeah. one is? So this one, if it's real, it converts from the voltage, from the zero to five volt length of a potentiometer into degrees. And for the simulator, it's already coming out of the simulator in degrees, so it doesn't do the scaling factor. Um, so now, now that we've seen the differences in code, we're going to run it. So you run it by right-clicking and going to run as, and the only difference is instead of hitting deploy, you hit simulation. So now it's building the program, it's setting it up for simulation, and now it's starting Gazebo. So you can see the last message on the bottom of the screen is that Gazebo is starting, and this takes a little bit of time because it's starting up the whole simulator. and. Uh, and then, and then you'll see the, uh, the robot in the field in simulation. Now, the, the screen that just popped up is actually a little uh, driver model of a driver station, which you can use to set the mode that the, that the uh, field is running in, whether it be uh, autonomous teleoper test mode and whether we're enabled or not. Yep. So first, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run the autonomous and just make sure that everything's working. So we hit the enable button. And you can see the claws open up, and it's going to pick up the soda can and put it on the box. And so I can see it's picking it up, and it'll drive forward in a second and place it. So in addition to the autonomous, it also has a teleoperated control, and that's done using a... So the default mapping is a PS3 controller, although you can remap it to work with any controller. Wait, what's that purple line coming out of the front of the robot? That's, the, that's visualizing the ultrasonic range finder so that you can see how far away it thinks the box is. So there's, there's actually code then in the robot program that's using an ultrasonic range finder that's mounted on the front of the simulated robot, and, and you can use that in your program like for knowing where the box is. Yeah. Teleop mode, so we click on teleop and we enable. So we're gonna drive around and try to pick up a soda can. So we need to lower the uh, width, lower the elevator, 
then we need to try to slowly inch forward and pick it up and then we need to turn around and I, as you can tell driving is not my strong suit um, so I'm going to back up put it here and put the box and now okay so I knocked over the other one but so how did you how did you operate the robot what was operating the claw so I was pressing the buttons so you have the left and right bumpers on the PS3 controller so on the right side you can lower the elevator and get ready to pick up and you can also pick up and then on the left side you can place onto the box and you can see this if you open up the OI file so if you go well, so if you open up the file, you can see how the buttons are mapped. Um, and that file is, if you open up oi.h, java.java. .java. So here you can see the uh, O1 is mapped to prepare to pick up, O2 is mapped to pick up, L1 is placed, and L2 can rerun the autonomous if you need to. And you can edit this file to pick whatever mapping you like. Um, so so that's really good. So so this is so this is um, a program which you can you can uh, um, get the sample program. You can run it and play with it. But then you can make it do whatever you want. So you can actually edit the code and change it to do other things if you'd like. And and this will run exactly the same. We have to take our word for it. But this is the same code that actually runs in our real robot that we have here. Um, and so so you get to play with it and kind of learn a little bit more about WPI Lite programming by looking at this program, and then you can. Uh, change it if you'd like. Yeah, and if you want to see a videos of how to program this robot to get similar looking code, we do have those videos available elsewhere. So we'll stop for now, and then if you come back in the next video, we'll show you how to do the same thing but with a different robot. With a real FFC robot.